All right, in today's entertainment city, a revenge story told from the female gaze. We're catching up with the stars of The Beguiled and their Oscar-winning director, Sofia Coppola. And we do not propose to entertain you. You'll find them easily amused. You won't be here long enough for that. Sophia kind of reversed that role of how women are like portrayed in movies normally of being the kind of the object of affection and now we made Colin that object. The Beguiled is a tale of feminine warfare, turning the 70s Clint Eastwood flick of the same name on its head as it tells the story from the perspective of women. The retelling comes under the direction of Sophia Coppola, and the Coppola winner and the daughter of Francis Ford Coppola. It's based on the novel by Thomas P. Cullinan and is set at an all-girls board boarding school in the Deep South during the Civil War, where things get complicated after the women decide to take in a wounded Union soldier. In the Eastwood adaptation, the soldier is the hero. In Coppola's version, don't be so sure. Did I get you anything? Give me the key. You know I'd get in trouble for that. Colin Farrell stars alongside Nicole Kidman, Elle Fanning, and one of Coppola's favorite casting choices, Kirsten Dunst. Terry Hart spoke with Dunst about Coppola's vision. You've worked with Sophia for years. What do you think it is that she brings to the screen about groups of women together? I think she's just coming from her own perspective of wanting to tell, you know, female stories. You know, as a filmmaker, you migrate to the stories you want to tell and want to tell. feel like emotionally that you can translate that on film. How did you handle the dynamic with, you know, Nicole and Al and Kristen and and that and the girls, the younger girls. During the rehearsal period, we spent a lot of time with them together as a group, and they took sewing and dancing, all these lessons. And and right away, Nicole, I asked her to you know be the headmistress and be in charge, which I think was easy because the younger girls you know looked up to her. We ask for your protection over our school, and we pray that we will be kept from harm throughout the night. Talk about superhero squad goals, Iron Man and Spider-Man, the best of pals at last night's world premiere of Spider-Man Homecoming, where the newest Peter Parker, Tom Holland, was feeling the weight of his new role. I think that for me, I've realized the responsibility of trying to be a role model for young kids model wear. So yeah, I definitely live by my, with great power comes great responsibility model. Remember to tune in next week for our chat with Holland and his co-stars. Spider-Man Homecoming hits theaters just over a week from today. But we're only two days out from Canada's 150th birthday. In today's edition of Celebrities Loving All Things True North Strong and Free, two stars from across the pond. Happy birthday! What sets Canada apart to you? I think the people. I think the people are just sort of evolved and kind and seem to be genuinely happy. When I say Canada, what does that mean to you? I don't really know, just like a flurry of music anyway. The level of talent coming out of this country is a joke. There's coming Justin and Drake and The Weeknd and Leslie Cara, Sean, Bouvelet. He's my favorite man in the world. Oh. There's no one nicer than Michael Bouvelet. I didn't even know you had a bromance with him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Michael Bublé, he just received the Governor General's Performing Arts Award in Ottawa. Now we're chatting with him about it in tomorrow's Entertainment City.